She's a multiple Grammy Award winner with her band Alabama Shakes. Also has a, as a solo artist, she has a brand new album called What Now? She just played two shows at Webster Hall here in the city, is on tour now. You can get all the info and tour dates at BrittanyHoward.com. Uh, Brittany, I want to get into the new album uh, in a second, but first I just wanted to get your reaction to two performances recently. Number one, Tracy Chapman on the Grammys. Incredible. We, we missed you, Tracy. Yeah. So good. It was it was so good to see Tracy up there where she belongs. I honestly, I'm just like hoping that she's going to make a new album and that would be something else to look forward to. How about Joni Mitchell on the Grammys? Absolutely incredible. Um, legendary songwriter. I feel like a lot of people I was watching the Grammys with in that room hadn't heard that song before and the whole room stopped and listened to every single word. Um when you're in the presence of a beautiful thing, there's not much to say. And a song like that is actually my favorite Joni Mitchell song. Um, and uh, once again, it just goes to show what great art is. Congrats on making another excellent album. And on both this album and your last one, Jamie, you're listed as producer. Now, does that mean a lot more work for you? Or is it just sort of a natural sort of progression when you are the quote unquote producer of an, of an album? Um, maybe it is more work. I wouldn't know any different. I've made all of my albums the same way. I like to be in, like, in control of where it's going. I like to detail all the tones. I, I enjoy that. It's my favorite place to be is in the studio. So just having the title producer, I mean, it's not a new thing. It, I, I've always produced, yeah. And um, it's fun. Yeah. And the album I read is mostly recorded or completely recorded in analog. Yeah, I mean... um. That's that, that's that's what we fell in love with. It's harder. It takes a lot more time. Uh, it takes tons more time. Not a lot. Tons more time. Um, but it's worth it. You're, you're just kind of chasing this certain visceral feeling. Was and it the two-inch tape, the 24-track or whatever, how many tracks it was? Yeah, we did a bunch of different types of tape, too. And um, at the end of the day, I don't know if anybody's going to be able to tell the difference, but we could. We did it. And on this album, you really got to stretch out with songs that are sort of psychedelia, dance music, dream pop, avant jazz. Did that just happen naturally uh, as you wrote the songs, or was it part of the plan from the beginning as you were sort of envisioning these songs? You know, it just happens organically. It's like usually when I sit down to write a song, I'm experiencing some kind of feeling. And to me, a feeling could be like a very, very small mu music video, very, very small short film, and I just need a soundtrack to it. Um, so that soundtrack is always going to be different. I can't really say that I'm always feeling like a soul revival song. Sometimes it feels like avant-garde jazz. And sometimes it feels like pop. Sometimes it feels like psychedelic soul. And so I just use all of those things as like tools in my toolbox. I want to play this song, uh, Prove It To You. Tell us about this one, and then we'll play it. So I like to play with a lot of juxtaposition when I'm creating songs and the juxtaposition of this one in particular is the voice is so small and vulnerable and pleading and unsure, but hopeful, but kind of darkly hopeful. Because as I imagine going through so many relationships and, and it just hasn't, it hasn't quite panned out and here you go again. And so like that's kind of the effort in the song, but then it's accompanied by dance music. So it helps you swallow it, you know what I mean? So it's like um, a spoonful of sugar makes the medicine go down. You're right about that. I want to go back in time a little bit, 2015 specifically, Lollapalooza, performing Get Back with Paul McCartney. Tell us about that moment. It was crazy. Like, first off, Paul McCartney reaching out to me was already wild. You know, he could have sent me an email and I would have been like, oh my God, one time Paul McCartney sent me an email. But he was like, oh, I would love if you got up here and you play Get Back with us and play the guitar and got up there and sing. And I was like, I'm not going to say no. <laughs> There's lots of pressure, like instantly. It was like, oh God, it's so a terrifying. Beetle. A beetle. And I was like, don't you can't mess it up. Because there's about like, at least out of those like 80,000 people that were there, at least 20,000 of them know how to play this song good. And so now it's like, it's up to me to show up and not mess it up. So that's all the pressure I felt was just like, there's people who love this song so much. So I practiced this guitar solo until my fingers were literally raw. And I was, you know, I had super glue on my fingers and everything. And then I and then I go up there, and he was the sweetest man to me. He was so sweet. And it, he was, like, hands on the whole way up to the part of getting to the stage. And everybody in his team was so nice. And they looked at me, and they said, are you ready? And I was like, uh-huh. <laughs> and I remember 
remember walking up there and the stage is all lit up. They have like the craziest stage and it's all lit up. I remember looking down like, what is this? And never seen anything like it before, LED stage. And then I look out to the crowd and it was like people as far as my eyes could see. And then he started the song and I was like, all right, here we go. And the solo comes up, the solo I've been practicing for like, I don't know, two weeks. I had it the first time, but I just wanted to make sure I knew it backwards and forwards in my sleep, everything. And I start playing it. His guitar player starts playing it too. And I look at him and I'm like, I'm like, no, stop. I, I got it. I got it. <laughs> so we just both played it. <laughs> Fantastic. Do you remember the first time you came to New York City or played New York City? If so, tell us about it. I think the first time I played New York City was it, is it called CM, CMJ? CMJ. I actually got a story for that too. It's crazy. By the time when he got up to New York to CMJ to play New York for the first time, I lost my voice because I had been doing so many shows. And I, I remember being panicked because I remember this was very important, you know. And my manager somehow got a hold of Celine Dion's vocal coach and was like, hey, please help, please help Brittany. So we get in the car and we go here. And I remember walking into this place and it was, it was wild. It was like tubas and trumpets and everything all over the place. And I walk into this room and he videotapes me like warming up and shows me how to drink this concoction and gargle it. And we do all the things and then my voice is back. But we're late, we're, we're very seriously late. I pull up right on time to get out of the car and to run onto the stage, open my mouth and sing. And thank God my voice came out. So yeah, that was the first time. Fantastic, Brittany Howard, thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks so much for watching. Did you like that video? You can check out a few more over here and don't forget to subscribe to iHeart right here. And if you're already a longtime fan, make sure you ring the bell down below so you don't miss a single video. We'll see you next time.